and I wanted to go outside and, and Kevin did not want me to leave the cabin. So I got into a bit of a physical struggle with him and, and uh, you know, one of the first things he did was punch me right in the solar plexus and knock the wind out of me. Uh, but I was savvy enough to not go down and kept struggling with him physically and he was calling out to the other guy for help. And uh, the other guys showed up and they <clears throat> they had like a laundry cord, like a 3 8 inch diameter line. And they tied me up with my knees and my wrists and my neck all bound together. Wow. Like my knees were drawn up to my wrists and my wrists were drawn up to my neck with this cord. Mm -hmm. And took me inside the... Uh, cabin and threw me into the hallway and uh, then nailed a piece of plywood up over the entryway to the hallway. So I'm in there, uh, you know, struggling for my life because initially I was on my side and if I relaxed for a second, the ropes around my neck would start strangling me. So I knew that I had to uh, be able to relieve this pressure or, you know, it would strangle me. So at first I got my back against the wall and was able to gather myself and I tried to heave myself into a sitting position several times. I almost passed out once when I was doing that. And if I would have passed out, that would have been it. I would have died. They wrapped duct tape around my mouth. So you couldn't scream. So I couldn't yell, right? And uh, anyway, so finally I got into a sitting position. I was able to brace my feet against the ground and push against the wall to relieve this choking pressure on me. And I worked the duct tape down off of my face with my hands, my thumbs, like that. And... Uh, then I started working on the knots with my teeth. And uh, it took me probably uh, half an hour to get into a sitting position initially. Then I think probably another couple hours to get out of the ropes. Meanwhile, uh, I found out later that my wife Carrie had come out and uh, she saw that this piece of, uh, that I wasn't anywhere to be seen and this piece of plywood was nailed up over the entryway. And she asked them, what, where's Scotty? You know, why is that piece of plywood up there? And uh, they said, oh, he's in there sleeping. And we put that up because we didn't want to disturb him. He's sleeping and we didn't want any noise to disturb him. That's how they explained it to her. So she just left. Meanwhile, I'm in there fighting for my life. You know, and uh, when I finally got out of the ropes, uh, I stood up, I was just, you know, I was just shaking with just uh, like rage and adrenaline and fear, you know, and oh my God, these guys can really kill me, you know, uh, that's how far this thing can go, you know, yeah. and uh, I just was kind of just pacing around in there all night. Uh, no food or water. Yeah. And uh, I uh, was just trying to think of what, what to do, you know. And it started getting light. I, I decided to uh, go out and confront them, you know. So I, I booted that piece of plywood off the entryway and I went out there and, uh, you know, one of, uh, the guy Ben Stringer was there laying on the couch. 
And I said, all right, you know, he sat up, he was sleeping, you know, and he sat up, you know, jolted upright, you know, and, and uh, I said, all right, mother you want to kill me? Just kill me. I said, but do it to my face and do some shit like that tying me up, you know? And I said, and if you're going to do it, you do it now. And I said, you better not give me any more silverware either. Or next time you might wake up with a butter knife buried in your chest. And with that, he got up off the couch and took a couple big steps across the room and just blasted me, punched me as hard as he could right in the face. You know, and it rocked me, but it didn't knock me down. And I said, all right, you going to kill me now? You know, and it was just really in his face confronting him about it. And at that point, this guy Kevin had come out, you know, he was yelling, Kevin, Kevin. Asking for backup. Yeah, and Pulverize. Kevin had come there, and he actually kind of diffused the situation. And he apologized for them tying me up. And I'm like, what, you're sorry? I could have died in there. Kevin Popovich, <laughs> one of the guys that was beating and beating assaulting me. you. <laughs> yeah, that almost killed me. Uh, Immediately after that, the next thing that he went on to is he became David Miscavige's personal bodyguard. After his criminal week after week, he became David Miscavige's punching, personal bodyguard. He was off the caliber <laughs> to be David Miscavige's personal bodyguard. I want this on record that these are Sea Org members, right. the clergy of yes. the Church of Scientology a 501c3 tax exemption entity right. has this kind of atrocity and oh. cruelty. This here's, is here's another thing. atrocity.